there is a kid in Kazakhstan, you know, that don't have access to cameras, don't have access to uh, the galleries, don't have access to books, but he has brain, he has imagination, and he has such an imagination that uh, isn't affected by uh, Western uh, imagery and, uh, you know, and everything that gets created in his head, uh, we didn't see it. And he all of a sudden has tool to express those ideas. And we will see things that we've never seen before. We will see concepts that we haven't thought of them before. Everything will change. Imagery, video, movies, dialogues, everything. It's going to be a different world in 10 years. Welcome to one more episode of uh, Zero One Cast, a place where humans create and machines dream. Today we had uh, Luca Tischler. Uh, he lives in, in Slovenia. He's a visual AI specialist, advisor, and creator, but he's really strong on this like Confi UI and open source movement. So our episode was mostly about open source, but also yeah about AI creativity and, and, and many other things. So yeah. How's, how how was your your experience on this conversation, Mauricio? Yeah, hey, super nice to have someone that is also part of the open source community and and Confua user. It's completely different take from the other AI AI tools, and I think Luca has been doing a great job in spreading this word for people and teaching and making people aware of how wonderful it is to why and, and, and the amazing things you can do there so he's a guy with lots of great ideas and he lends lots of great tips for people who want to start tipping his toe on it into this open source ai community so if you're interested this episode is for you hello welcome to one more episode of zero one cast Today we have uh, Luca Tischler. He's a visual AI art specialist, artist, I assume as well, advisor, uh, creator. And the episode of today will be really focused on yeah, open source, uh, Confi UI. So if you're interested in these topics, uh, stay with us. So I also have with me Mauricio, our creative partner here on Zero One Cine. And, uh, I will hand uh, to to Luca. So, Luca, would you give us some 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 short intro about yourself, so for people who, who don't know you, etc. Yeah. Um, so, as you said, my name is Luca. I come from Slovenia. I have about 18 years of uh, experience in uh, different areas of visual stuff. Uh, so, um, my career is pretty non-linear. I started as a video production guy. I uh, shot quite a couple of uh, music videos, uh, advertisements, uh, but then I moved behind the camera. So uh, video post-production, uh, did a lot of uh, video editing, uh, compositing, uh, visual effects. Um, so I moved to motion design, to graphic design, and uh, animations, 2D animations, a bit of 3D animations. Um, so, but uh, about two years ago, uh, I started creating with uh, AI and uh, more than one year ago, I just quit my job because I saw that AI is the future and you know, everything will be, uh, it, everything will change. So I just focused on AI completely and uh, here I am. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for, for sharing. Uh, yeah, I think AI is transforming many lives. Also ours, we are also here created this podcast because of AI and we uh, are you know, working with this and this getting immersed on this world. But I would I will start with the question that we ask everyone, uh, which is, we already touched it, but you can go a bit more. So. How is the look before AI? So what you were, like before I talk about AI, let's talk uh, about this. So what you were doing, what your experience, what like, how was the look before AI and how this is changing your life kind of? Uh, yeah, the thing is that uh, I, I am freelancer for most of my career. 
So here in Slovenia, Slovenia is really small country with small market. So I had to be a lot of things uh, if I wanted to survive. I had to do um, like everything, uh, animations, design, uh, even uh, building web, web pages. Uh, so um, I constantly moved from one thing to another, you know, and uh, when things uh, didn't go well, I found a job. I stayed in job uh, until uh, things picked up again. So I quit my job and I focused on the, I mostly I focused on things I like, things I love. Uh, so about 18 years ago, I found a new hobby and that was uh, design, uh, Photoshop. So I started uh, um, uh, going to SAA school, SAE. It's an Australian school. And uh, um, I started doing uh, animations and uh, video and I turned my hobby into work. So it's similar to AI, you know. Uh, I had a job and I did AI, uh, um, app, I mean, um, when I finished my job and uh, it felt so good, it felt so well. And I just said, let's turn that into business. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Um, yeah, I was um, doing a lot of stuff, uh, doing, uh, working with a lot of uh, teams, uh, a lot of projects, uh, pretty busy, but uh, I was, I was kind of in cage here in Slovenia because Slovenia is not known for being very, very creative. Um, clients here are very um, conservative, so you can't really be yourself right? Uh, you can't sell your ideas. You can't be, you know, um, um, I was, I was seeing people doing really, really creative stuff, but I couldn't because the clients wanted to, uh, you know, do classic stuff. Uh, but now with AI, uh, things are changing because, uh, AI is so advanced in technology, in creations, and uh, people like that. So you can be really, really creative with AI and you can show your talents. You can show what you really, really want and people pick up. And uh, lately it's it's been showing. Uh, got a lot of calls, a lot of uh, cooperations, a lot of projects. So I can really express myself the way I want to and the way I couldn't before. Right, that's... I that's very liberating and we hear this from many other artists uh creatives uh, i think you also have similar stories i also like work with many different mauricio as well music video photography and like many different areas of the creative field work with agencies work with clients but always having our, our ideas and and now that's the thing we can produce shoot do everything without the client right without asking permission without the money without the camera and i think just us the I think people who work before in the creative industry and know how hard it is to make stuff, even at 30 seconds commercial, these people, when they do with AI, they see the, it's like 90% jump and they, they realize the potential. They become like us kind of adopters and evangelists in some way, because like, and I also think that once you see it, you cannot unsee it, right? Like when you experience it and you remember how hard it is to make this shot or to make this video, you cannot unsee, and then that's why it gets this, maybe we can call some kind of obsession, but I think for us just novelty is just creativity and, and, and expression, right? And talking about, about creativity, do you think AI enhances or replaces creativity? Do you want to talk about pros and cons? Or like, so how, how, what's your experience in, like, in this relationship between AI and creativity? So when I started working with AI, I got overwhelmed with so many options I can now do. So many styles that AI can mix together. And I saw so many images I've seen for the first time in my life. So I wouldn't say it replaces creativity, but it enhances it. Because now you can think differently. Uh, before you were limited by your brain in the concepts you knew and uh, the concepts you've seen somewhere. Uh, but AI is trained on all of them, on all concepts, on all um, 
objects, all people, all everything, uh, impressions, styles. And the thing is that you can't imagine what what happens if you would mix, let's say, um, Banksy and Kandinsky and throw James Cameron in the formula, right? I mean, the brain cannot process all those different things, but AI can. So we can get totally new concepts and totally new imagery uh, with AI. Uh, and I mean, you couldn't do that by yourself. So the thing is that you can now start thinking out of the border. You can um, start thinking creatively in on a different level, completely different level, on a higher level. So you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, you can imagine anything and AI elevates your imagination. And uh, if you if you see something for the first time and if you keep seeing something for the first time, your brain gets stimulated. You can start imagining things different in different way. And uh, you can see, you can visualize, visualize stuff, visualize uh, your thoughts in the different direction in, on a much higher level. So, I mean, it, def it definitely elevates your imagination and your creativity. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm 100 percent with you there. Like, I, I mean, it always we have people that will try to use to like not do their job and not to express their creativity, like as the easy route. But we know that that would not generate great results or anything like that. So, people that are like really using AI as a tool, I think they are all discovering how much more creative they can be with like the power of this new thing. So, man, you've been in a role of uh, head of AI research and advisor on Catalyst, which is a full AI company. How is it to be in like in a specific AI role in a specific AI company? Like how different it is from your past experiences in other type of companies? And how was your, your, your work in, in, in Catalyst? It's great. It's great because there is no one, <laughs> there's no one to tell you what, how should I do it? Because a lot of things are undiscovered. A lot of things you have to create on your own. You have to figure out how to do something. So there's no one behind your back doing, no, you're doing it wrong. There is no wrong. There is no wrong. Because we are at the beginning and we are establishing what is right and wrong. But of course, we all know that there, there is no right and wrong in AI. It just is. So um, it's a great experience, um, a lot of freedom, a lot of creativity um, with specific goal and specific tools. And uh, I have specific tools to reach a certain um, results and I can play with it. I see it as Lego bricks, you know, uh, I, I, I put uh, Lego bricks and I build something. If I don't like it, I just, you know, uh, destroy it and work, uh, start working from the scratch. And uh, I get something that I can work with, um, I can continue working on. So it's, it's a lot of freedom here and uh, a lot of creativity that I can express uh, technically and visually. Yeah, that's super aligned with what I've been, been experiencing too. Like it's, it's super technical, the work of like, especially working with ConfUI and this kind of stuff, but as nobody really knows how to do like exactly things like, and by making some mistakes, you kind of create new things that you can use. Like it's super interesting to like be creative in a technical environment. Like I, I've really been enjoying this type of thing. So thanks. Thanks a lot for, for sharing that, man. And it's very experimental as well. Like it's, I, I think one uh, just very short comment. I think one thing I uh, things I think I like about AI is uh, it's very experimental. Again, there's no right or wrong. It's like pure experimentation. And also, I, I see myself getting on this flow state again more often because you're just uh, kind of this casino in some way, but it, it gets you on this creative flow. For sure. For sure. Exactly. 
And, and on the other side, like how, how it is to be a consultant freelance in the AI landscape? Like, especially what kind of projects you receive more requests? Is like, and what is the thing that you most need, like the clients need most now from AI? And, and what do you think it's preventing more clients to jump into the AI landscape? Well, I'm lucky enough to have a couple of clients that are very, um, that are very forward, not the right word, but, um, um, yeah, forward thinking or forward thinking. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they know that AI is uh, disruptive. It's heavily disruptive, uh, thing, and it's going to af affect so, so many things. And uh, they want to know a lot. So if I have two years of experience in AI. I started with uh, Midjourney, but I quickly moved on to uh, Disco Diffusion. I don't know if you guys know it, but it's super technical uh, workflow. And you work more on, uh, more on uh, technical stuff than on creative stuff. And I fell in love with it because you could change a couple of dials and you could get a completely different visual. And each visual to me was something worth exploring, completely exploring. And I wanted to know more and more and more and more. I still am in this position. I want to know more and more and more. And the thing is that people, uh, my clients um, found me uh, via mostly via LinkedIn, uh, because uh, I'm sharing a lot of knowledge and they saw uh, the level of my knowledge and they want to learn. So not just to learn, but to put uh, this technology into their operations, into their workflows. So they want to see where are the limits? How can we push them? What can we do with, it, with them? And uh, that's, that's really, really nice. Um, so uh, consulting is like selling knowledge and uh, creating examples for them to see what can be done with current technology. And of course, the pushing the limits of this technology, what can be done and um, what, what can we do um, this week and what can we do next week? Because things are moving so quickly, it's it's unbelievable, and uh, I'm I'm telling them just you know, it cannot be done yet, but give it a week or two, and we're there. Yeah, it's unbelievable and overwhelming. <laughs> it is a bit, yeah, but like I said, I'm very very knowledgeable and curious person, and I and I thrive for new info, for new workflows, for new approaches, uh, new technology, and I want to test it. I want to see what can happen if I, I uh, combine those approaches, those workflows, those, you know, and see what happens. Because every time it's a surprise, it surprises me. Every time, even if I'm using Midjourney, you know, it surprises me what, can, what the machine can output. And sometimes it's an utter gibberish, you know, but sometimes it's amazing and it's so beautiful. And, uh, and um, people also love that, you know, experimenting with uh, this technology. And I'm glad that I can help them with my knowledge and my experience. Yeah, I, I think you've been so much on point on like being a consultant is kind of selling knowledge and selling like even the willingness to like experiment and make mistakes, uh, it's, it's quite on point. Like one of the, the biggest requests I get from most company, they're like, Hey, look at this, what these people are doing in like, platform X. I'm like, oh, I can do that on ConfUI for you with better control. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's quite crazy how, how just the knowledge became like the valuable thing, not even the, the, the final deliverable, but how to do it and how to teach people about it. Talking a little bit about that, uh, you have been hosting the AI Artist React with Nej, and it's about AI, it's about ConfUI. So what's the initial idea in that and what's 
your motivation from you guys to do it and how was the response from the community about it um yeah me and nate uh, we know each other we've been knowing each other from the beginning of this year because uh, i was really looking for people in slovenia that know how to work with stable diffusion and sadly there are almost none and uh yeah and i felt lonely here in slovenia i mean you have a couple of people using uh, adobe firefly and mid journey but not professionally but stable diffusion is still something most people don't want to touch because it uh, requires a steep learning curve you have to learn a lot quite a lot in order to use it and people get scared so the thing is that uh, i found him via discord server and we started talking he's actually not living in slovenia but he speaks slovenian so the language barrier was was not there um and uh, we we the, the chemistry was there we tried a couple of projects created a couple of projects and we found out that we communicate really well between each other uh and um yeah he had an idea uh about uh, a show ai artists react it was inspired by corridor digital uh, vfx artists react uh which i quite like uh cuz as i told before i was compositor myself and i love vfx um and i know when i see what how how much work is put into it and uh the same is with ai and there were no AI reaction videos out there yet. So we just said, hey, let's take the concept and uh, transform it to AI because there are so many beautiful videos out there, so many awesome works, and I don't think that enough people see them. Uh I mean, I don't care if they have 10 million views on TikTok. Uh I think that our community, the creators community, uh should see all those videos. And we probably watch the same videos because we follow the same creators, right? Um, but we can miss here and there a video or two. And uh, I really want to uh, to uh, show um, people, uh, the creators, what other people are doing. And hence, I'm also connecting artists between themselves. I mean, we are. Um but the idea for Comfy Coffee um was actually mine because I saw that a lot of people are starting to not just using not just uh, uh it's not just interest was building to Comfy UI but uh, a lot of people started using it and uh, when I started um posting the Comfy things on LinkedIn my uh rate of followers just skyrocketed so and i think that comfy ui is something that it's going to grow more and more and more and it's going to be huge it's going to be like blender you know mm -hmm. and um yeah and i really enjoy working with comfy ui and i really enjoy teaching so um talking about comfy ui is uh, one one thing i really really enjoy and uh just like I said before, a lot of people are afraid of Comfy UI because it looks scary. But uh, once you get over it, it's 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 so cool working with it. It's so friendly and it looks unfriendly, but it is so so friendly. It 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 uh, does whatever you want to do. I mean, you you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, so yeah, I'm. Uh, wanted to bring Comfy a bit closer to people, uh, and uh, the response is fantastic. Um, people are thanking uh, us for bringing Comfy to them because they thought uh, it was a scary thing, but uh, they saw the last, I think the last week, we had uh, Comfy 101 for beginners, and a lot of people switched from Automatic 1111 to Comfy. And uh, I was so stoked uh, about this. Talking about uh, Comfy UI, uh, you haven't been uh, like a big voice on this open source local community. 
And like, why did you choose this route instead of other routes or using more like other platforms like Midjourney, Runaway, whatever? So what, what was your main drive to go? Was the freedom, was the uh, flexibility? Uh, what, what, what was your main motivation or what? Control. Mm -hmm. Control. Yeah. In Midjourney, I mean, Midjourney, Runaway, Luma, the the commercial stuff is like the slot machine. Uh, you put in prompt, you put an image, click, and you know, the machine does what it does. But uh, with uh, stable diffusion, you get a lot more. First of all, it's free. I'm very I'm a fan of free stuff. Uh, but not also that, um, you can even switch models, you know? And when the, the first custom models came out, I was like, yeah, give, give, give it to me. And then Civit AI um, started uh, functioning and uh, I, I was a Civit AI um, member when there were, I think, four or five models up there. Yeah. And uh, it was, it's really crazy how that grew. But anyway, um, yeah. When uh, ControlNet was introduced, I completely changed from Midjourney to Stable Diffusion because mm. now you can dictate what kind of visuals you want to have. And that was huge for me. And I think that ControlNet um, caused the open source community to grow as it's growing right now. Because without ControlNet, you would have subpar Stable Diffusion against me journey right um it, i mean it doesn't matter how many trained custom models do you have if you don't have control i mean let's be honest here me journey is still the best ai image uh, uh text to image tool out there uh, you have a lot of control of styling a lot of control with prompts but you don't have a lot of control uh, with poses. You cannot transfer from one image to another. The things you want to have uh, in painting was introduced like immediately with automatic 1111. So you could do a lot of stuff. You could create much more than you could in mid journey. So that was my main force to go to open, for, uh, open source. And also the community. I mean, I've been there with uh, VFX and compositors and 3D communi community, and it's nice. But the community, in AI in open source, it's it's the best community I've I've ever uh, uh, been in my life. Easily, it's it's so nice. It's so cool. I mean, I remember. When uh, people, mid-journey, there, there was like a difference between stable diffusion people and mid-journey people, okay? And mid-journey people... It's like Bitcoin and Ethereum, as I say. Yeah. Didn't, they didn't share anything. They blocked everything. You know, they didn't, they didn't even want to share. I mean, nothing, nothing. But with stable diffusion, yeah. Here is my image. Here is my metadata. Just uh, throw it in uh, automatic 11.11 before Comfy. And here is your data. You, you can recreate whatever you want to, to do. Oh, do you need help? Here is help. Uh, do you want me to, to guide you through it? Sure. Let's have a chat. You know, that's and definitely also something that we hear a lot also on the podcast or on the events. Uh, we also met in person in, in Amsterdam quickly. Uh, and like the, yeah, the AI community is, uh, is really something different. I, we also been to like, we are on the internet for quite some time and, it, it's 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 interesting. It, it, people are really open, really sharing. Uh, no one bothers you about teaching you and stuff. And for me, like we are also like uh, starting this uh, zero, zero one educa, which is the school where we want to teach AI filmmaking in in Brazil and in Portuguese, uh, since we also we are Brazilians and uh, like. And uh, I see like that. Like it, my point is like there's really no bother on sharing or on teaching because every person will create something totally different. Like it's like giving a camera to someone in a room, people will take 20 different, different photos from the same room, 20 different people. And that's great. And that's fine. Like you don't, it's really, uh, but I, I think it's really interesting this aspect of the, 
how this AI community is really sharing and teaching and open and transparent. And it's not, I, I will, you know, hide this prompt because no one's going to use it. It's, good, it's exactly the opposite, right? It's, it's very interesting. Uh, talking uh, about the community, again, uh, we see this very strong community. Uh, and, and like starting with config can be, as you said, can be painful, can be hard also to install, to manage. The things get out of date very quickly, you know, all of these problems that also keep a lot of people away. Uh, but still, why do you think more and more people are going to this direction? But I think mostly, what are the biggest challenges to increase the adoption and reduce this friction to start with ConfUI? That's a very, very good question. So I'll start with why people are choosing Confi. Because as I said before, people want to control their outputs. And uh, they figure out that with Stable Diffusion, you have, uh, you have success, more success than mid-journey. A lot of people, a lot of companies I'm talking to or advising have tried mid-journey, but they're not very satisfied with it just because of control. They spend a lot of time to get one image. I mean, it's not the same, but you spend less time uh, finding a good stock photo than creating a mid-journey photo. Maybe it's a controversial thing right now, but um, yeah, because when you have this idea in your head, the, the, in mid-journey, you have to make compromise. In stable diffusion, you still have to make compromise, but a lot less than in mid-journey. And uh, the thing is that when people go to stable diffusion, I think that right now the Comfy UI has started um, trending, right? Because I didn't see that hype in automatic 11.11 or Forge or Invoke or uh, other user interfaces. Because uh, someone who dives into stable diffusion gets logic relatively quickly but then when he chooses when they choose this tool then why don't we just get to comfy when you get everything and not just that i mean you can create images you can create same images in different styles you can create videos you can create uh, all of that stuff and you have loras and you have uh, control nets and you have a lot of stuff that other uh, um, softwares or whatever don't have. So I think that Comfy UI is also becoming known for um, creators that are trending on TikTok and uh, on Instagram because people get curious, how did you do that? And you will you will never see that happening in, in automatic 11.11 or in mid journey so they are becoming more and more curious and they're um, trying new workflows i mean um, you have free workflows on a couple of websites you know on civit ai on comfy workflows and such and you can just you know drag and drop in the work in the um, the canvas and it's there and you can study it it's everything is there you know and you can you can start messing with uh, the settings and with the notes immediately. So I think this is one of the causes why Comfy is, has started trending. Mm -hmm. And what do you for you? What is the biggest uh, challenge to to reduce this friction and increase adoption of Comfy? Yeah, first of all, installation, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have Pinocchio, we have uh, matrix stability, yeah, um, which can be, everything can be done with a click. So, but I don't know, a lot of people still don't know those tools exist, especially Pinocchio. I mean, Pinocchio is great. It's amazing because you not only get Comfy UI, but you get all the others uh, uh, open source tools, which you can create like right off the bat. 
uh, so yeah we have to fix this and we have to um, we have to bring more um, um, well people people we have to bring more information to people educators that's why, yeah that's why we also started the comfy coffee with mates so uh, more knowledge awesome awesome yeah i've been definitely trying to wrap my head around like how to make machines more accessible to people so they can use comfy wire like that's the, the biggest challenge right now you know what i mean but but you have uh cloud systems for stable diffusion but it's also a nuisance that you have to upload uh, uh models and lower us and it takes time you know just to start creating you spent one hour uploading stuff and uh yeah and you have to do it again when you close your session so that's that's kind of bad so yeah um definitely um systems are a bottleneck here definitely and and talking a little bit more in depth about these technologies what are the two technologies that you like the most use the most inside of confui like like say control net or animative these kind of things and what are the two things that don't exist yet but you will love to have in your comfy UI uh, beside comfy UI I love to work with uh, Luma with um, uh, and with Gen 3 I mean Gen 3 is something I get the same feelings than uh, two years back when I started using Midjourney because you have no control you don't know what you're going to get but every third or fourth uh, uh, output is amazing. It's just wow. It's not maybe it's not something you wished for, but it's really really amazing. You can't use it. it you can just you know uh, put it on uh, Insta or TikTok, and that's about it. But it was the same thing two years ago with Midjourney, and now Midjourney is um, used for professional stuff. So. Yeah, definitely Luma and Gen 3, and we're going to see about Sora when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, what was the other part of the question? Like the two AI things, technologies or tools that doesn't exist yet, and you see like a big, big thing. Like for me, it's definitely something about editing that will help put all the things together and, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, motion graphics. Yeah, but I don't think that we'll get motion graphics with current technology because we know that uh, the fusion technology works on uh, noise and unpredictability and uh, motion graphics needs specific motion, right? So you have an element that goes on x-axis from one point to another in straight line. You don't have any informations with the y-axis, right? And with um, 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 latent diffusion, you can't—you you just can't do that because there's noise. You would have to—you'd have to figure out. You would have to think in vectors, not in noise, but in vectors. And that's how you would get the straight lines and uh, you know perfect motion. But right now, it's it's impossible with yeah. current technology. Yeah, what I've been trying lately is like using ChatGPT to create these vector maps and produce like simple black and white animations, and then take to like Confi or whatever stylizer and generate like the visuals of it with poor style. But ChatGPT is actually good in like this mathematical very, linear things. Very creative. Things. Very uh... yeah. Very, yeah. very a good solution uh, you found. Also, you can ge generate this like MIDI bars on GPT and he can create like melodies and stuff that you can put together also in some like uh, program like music or any logic or anything. It's also, I saw some guy composing some like chill out beat songs, but starting <laughs> on GPT with the like the MIDI and then yeah. copy and pasting on the on logic and then working on the top. It's quite, quite interesting. Yeah, um, experimental. Yeah, yeah. 
But I think also, like Mauricio was talking, I think we are missing some tool. Uh, so if you are hearing and if you want to build it, we can test it for you. That will edit the whole film. Imagine that you drop all the videos there, you, you, and you put some soundtracks, and you, or maybe you can even put some VFX. You put on the folders, but then you prompt, right? Maybe you can you put the title, the style, the vibe, blah blah blah. But then it will be trained on so many films, and it will understand the structure of editing, of audio, of fades in, fade out, and when there is music, etc., and kind of create the, the the raw editing of your film. I think there's some plugins for Premiere. I saw on Instagram already some guys testing. I don't know if it's real, if they already work, uh, that will kind of put the, the, you know, this video together uh, for you. At least the, the raw part of it, of course, it will polish. But I also missing, I tested some kind of tools that promised it in some way. None of them uh, worked so far for me. Yeah, I just had a conversation a couple of days ago about editing, about AI editing. The thing is that editing is storytelling, yeah? And the thing is that storytelling can sometimes get completely unpredictable. And this is the brain we have. It's completely unpredictable. We are unpredictable creatures. AI is very predictable because it's being learned on data. And data is very controllable. You can see... But I think there is, a like, when we talk about the structure of a film, of course, it's creative. And it's a good point. It's just, You will tell a story also with the edit, with the pacing and all this. But, uh, like, it's a pattern, right? It's a, it's still exactly. a pattern. Like, there's a pattern of editing a documentary, for example, right? And Yes, but for example, I mean, if Quentin Tarantino would make Pulp Fiction the old school way, it wouldn't be as such a hit as it was. So I don't know what was his thought process. Maybe he started thinking of a, a non-linear film right at the beginning. But what if, you know, he, he had all the footage and he went to edit room and he said, hey, I have this idea. Let's, you know, let's not, let's break rules. Let's, let's put this here and put this there. So great stuff is comes from breaking rules and ai mm -hmm. has rules ai behaves by the rules mm -hmm. right but humans are not well well mostly we are but some of the greatest minds mm -hmm. they're breaking the rules right and this is how you get the 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 revolutionary stuff by breaking the rules of how things are made but, that, but that's the point. In order to break them, you need to know them very well with their yeah. closed eyes. And, and this yeah. only comes with experience, right? When you work up, you, you cannot get it by books. And, like, and it, once you know them, you can break them, right? I think that's uh, when you see a uh, like senior designer or junior designers, they go, yeah, I know all of this, but I will break this on purpose to create this effect or this, right? And yeah. I think that's you only able really to do it like when you know them very well. Like Tarantino, for example, he was um, reading one book about him uh, uh, right now. Uh, Tell more about this. And like, even like he was working on this like cassette tape shop. He was like watching everything, the good, the bad films. He was really like a rat. Like he was going to cinema to watch like three, two times the film on the same day, like in the morning with a friend, in the evening with another friend. He was like really like a rat, and he knew every kind of everything. And he was really able to to break to bring this yeah pop uh, culture in the middle of this trash kung fu and you know violent uh, funny with violence and yeah all of this exactly and the thing is that how we make ai models we feed it the best stuff we feed it the the greatest data right what if we started feeding it all the data right then only then AI could break the rule. But since we are curating which data we will feed the AI, we are actually disabling AI to break those rules. Mm, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, I, as we see, we, we see a lot of creativity in it. Uh, I think, and I see a lot of creatives, are even more creative now, at least that's the experience, that's what I hear. Do you think that we are kind of starting this like exponential kind of like digital renaissance, this like explosion of creativity, content, revolutions, changes like on this like creative area, 
I, I call this like digital renaissance, but yeah, do you think we are like going through this or starting this? And how like will like open source co coexist with like big companies on this scenario? Absolutely, absolutely. We are on the verge of, we are not there yet, but we will become, uh, we will get there really, really soon. With open source being the, 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 the democracy of creating because those tools are available to everyone. And the thing is that before that, uh, only a couple of people had those tools. Now there, there is, uh, I mean, we heard that a lot of times. There is a kid in Kazakhstan you know, that don't have access to cameras, don't have access to uh, the galleries, don't have access to books, but he has brain, he has imagination, and he has such an imagination that uh, isn't affected by uh, Western uh, imagery and, uh, you know, and everything that gets created in his head, uh, we didn't see it. And he, all of a sudden, has tool to express those ideas. And we will see things that we've never seen before. We will see concepts that we haven't thought of them before. Everything will change. Imagery, video, movies, dialogues, everything. It's going to be a different world in 10 years. We're, 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 we're seeing, uh, uh, um, we're seeing branches you know not just one branch but a couple of branches just going uh, away from classic and standard ways of how we did things and how we imagine things and we'll see completely different uh, approaches um, um, just like i said with the beginning of my journey i've seen things i haven't ever seen before in my life and it elevated my imagination. And I wanted to toy with it. I wanted to discover more and more and more. And now I can create stuff that uh, uh, weren't seen before on stuff I haven't seen before. You know what I mean? That That's interesting point, yeah, definitely. It, it, there's a lot of discussion about like, okay, we still need the human artist to doing the traditional type of work to feed AI and create new things. But that's actually not true. Like just by getting the things from AI and mixing them and, and, and trying yeah, new we'll things, you're really creating the new things. snake eating the, the tail of the snake, right? Because then the AI will start to be trained on the images and videos generated by AI itself, <laughs> right? And also yeah, information. I've read, I've read that if you do that, you corrupt models. Mm -hmm. So with all the um, imperfections and inconsistencies, you feed the new model. So the, the new model will bring more inconsistencies and more uh, um, 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 un, un, un... effects and unwanted things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And all of a sudden we won't have uh, realistic things anymore we'll just have ai things you know <laughs> yeah but, so but i think i think that uh human is definitely needed with ai yeah. with training with creating with guiding ai with uh, um you know using those tools with breaking the rules so definitely. we get we get completely new world out of this Definitely. I see a lot like the comparison with when photography came out that like the painters were most in the great majority doing like portraits of people. They are just copying people and there's a camera doing that. Like, so let's start exploring other stuff with painting and it created like the most creative movements we saw <laughs> in art history. So it, it's, it's a lot of things that can become good from it. Uh, uh, by the way, there's a great series of posts by Billy Bowman, and uh, he he wrote that uh, a couple of months ago. I, I don't know. I've I've lost time. I mean, in AI, I just lost the feeling of time. I, I, maybe it was last week. Maybe it was three months ago. I don't know. <laughs> but go check his uh, profile on LinkedIn where he put uh, 
the series of posts called We've Been There or We've, We've Been Here Before. Mm. And it goes through the history of disruptive technology and what were the reactions of people when the technology was introduced. And just like the title says, we've been here before. This is nothing new. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love BB's post. Uh, like, super good. Both the informational ones and the AI memes post, they're super <laughs> funny too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the dark side of, of AI. Like, uh, do you think we will achieve like AGI and, and, and what will it look like? Do you think like the machines will have a mind, consciousness, will operate independently of humans? Like what even is consciousness for a machine? Like, yeah, what's your I mean, take on that? AGI will definitely be achieved because there's, uh, people are working on it. Um, there's, uh, there's interest in building AGI. I think so, it's just a matter of when, right? Not a matter exactly, of who. Yeah, exactly. Some people say by the end of this year, some people say in two years, some people say in five years, but it will be achieved. Now, the question is what kind of AGI uh, we will make, we will create. Uh, with AGI, I think things will still be manageable. The stuff gets complicated when you introduce uh, super intelligence. Now, this is something that is what I'm a bit afraid of. Because the thing is that, that um, AI is trained with people's minds. And honestly, people are assholes. So if the teacher is asshole, then a student will most probably be asshole too, right? So I really, really hope, I mean, I don't have a lot of hope uh, with uh, OpenAI because we all know the, their team for ethics, uh, they, they got fired or quit. Uh, the same with Google. So there are no ethics with, uh, with uh, developing AGI, which is kind of scary. What, what, same what with Microsoft, think? same with Meta, all the big ones are not going much more for the money than from the ethics. I think they're just playing this role on the Congress, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, between the walls, it, where's the money? <laughs> we want to make more money and yeah. And I, I think OpenAI, yeah. they are for me, it's, I was also reflecting about that recently that like they kind of they kind of came from nowhere in some way, if you compare it to other companies and they it's very suddenly they got the status and the image as an Apple, as a right Microsoft. But they are not like they are quite a very small company, very like, I think, immature in some ways and like. But like we put them close as as Apple, even like Apple even show about them on their latest, like they will be on the iPhone and all of this. And and like so quickly they got the post, the, the, the first post, right? Like of course their their product it's amazing. I'm not saying that's not, but like we put them on this position so quickly. And 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 now we are starting to see these holes, like these stories and all this allows the people quitting. Now the last week was that people need to sign Something if they want to talk to the government, they need to talk to the company first, otherwise they will be have penalties, which is probably not even legal to do. So and then starting also the, the whistleblowers. So I think now again, like we put them there on the top so quickly. And now we are seeing that yeah, they're not so nice as they look like or are so fast or are so organized, right? Even a feature that they promised, they still didn't release. And you see also the competition going very fast and maybe even already beyond like cloudy and also open source will come like even like as, as in the same level or better. And I think for the cloud day, they are doing a very fast interaction, interactions and uh, solutions and stuff like that, multi-agents now and stuff like that. So yeah, I think the, you should I be mean, careful. I guess the thing is that we, we definitely need regulations, but we also need uh, a common regulations, global regulations that will be the same for US and for China and for Europe. 
because we, we can't just go and say, okay, this works for US, but Chinese can, China can do whatever they want to do. It's, it's, it's uh, very uh, uh, irresponsible, very, very irresponsible that we cannot even uh, uh, communicate about this. We can't even, I mean, we can even um, uh, make, uh, make, um, 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 well, to, to, to get along with each other uh, about the, about the global warming. And it's, it, it will kill us. It, it, we're gone if we don't do anything and we are not doing anything. And if we can't get uh, along with this question, how will we get along with AI, which is uh, a, a product, which is a, a market product, but it's so beyond the product. It's something that, that will surpass us. And, but, you know, money is more important, you know. That... Yeah. For me, the biggest AI problems are not AI problems, are human problems, which are commanding AI and governing AI. Like, even like the, this, this thing you said about different regulations, like Kling Video is the only platform that allows you to input like a celebrity in there. The other main ones, you cannot do that. Like. This is a huge difference. Like they don't care. That's it. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. It's it's just there. So it's it's quite complicated. But I definitely agree with the regulations. It's completely needed. It's completely needed. Europe is is giving some some nice first steps on that, but still, a long way to go it's to get some good place. Those are very very um how would you say, um, not specific. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they basically say, we don't want to be China. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, Maurice, so there is one question before we jump to the, the end in the last two questions. I think we should ask them, ask him, but I think you're the best person to ask, not me, uh, about this thing that we were talking about that, you know, there's many artists or like researchers doing these papers and doing these solutions and many companies, they go there, they, they take the, the models and stuff. They maybe change one thing or other and then sell as their own solution. So, uh, yeah, but Maurice, I think you're a better person to ask, formalize better this question for him than me. Yeah, again, I think it's, it's a little bit of a human problem or an AI problem, which is things that for law, like in the ConfUI open left license, Anything that you use for them, you need to specify where you get it and the modifications you do, and you are free to use and capitalize over it. That that's not the problem, and I don't think any person like is complaining about what they are doing, but how they are doing. Like in, hey, this workflow came out this week from the Confi community, and like three months later, we saw in some platforms with their claiming like. This is my job. I did this, and, <laughs> and but this now is, it's like two weeks later. You know, now this week was this face expressions, and you know, every week it's something. You know, yeah, it's getting faster and faster and faster. And like, I have personal experience with one of these platforms, which I was physically threatened by one of the employees. To like, yeah, get out of here and stop asking about open source communities, or we will get physical and had the experience of other people with the same company, but I will not say names or anything, but what, what do you think, especially will take the AI market, this kind of attitude from these companies, and do you see like they're having like a, a long lasting future operating that way? I mean, this is nothing new. We've seen this already. We've seen big companies stealing patents, ideas, uh, you know, buying people uh, to to work for them. So this is this is nothing new. It's just um, getting faster and faster. So yeah, you you get one workflow on Banadoko, and uh, the next week you get the same imagery on the platform. We won't mention. We all know which one is it. Um, so, of course, I don't think it's ethical, but 
it's something we've been doing for a long, long time. And it's why would AI be different? Yeah, definitely. I think I, I... it would be ethical just to, you know, to pay the creator the percentage. That yeah. would be ethical. But, you know, open source is just um, a lot of idealistic people who want to, you know, make the world better. I mean, yeah. you see what happened to Unix. You see what happened to Linux. You see what happened to uh, a lot of stuff. But they are still there and they are still respected in their own circles. But yeah. uh, the, the, the money, the, the, the money goes to other people. So you have to kind of decide, you know, whether you will be money grabber money grabbing core or you will be idealistic and make good stuff for people. One thing I think is also related to this that I think again, slowly changing, but uh, it's like the right to repair, right? More and more companies make things much harder to repair with special screws or stuff. Like for example, Apple is the best example of that. Uh, yeah. In 2000 something, they start to change the screw and now but then like people start to push, but also the government, right? Like, and for example, in Europe, they made Apple change to USB-C. This was like a big win of this. And now it's like, it's about the, the right to repair. So Microsoft saw this as also as like competitive advantage. So the latest notebooks are made like super like uh, modular. It's very easy to repair and change. So some other company, but I think again, yeah, it's something that we need to fight for, right? Like that for we are needed to fight for the right to repair our own devices that we bought with our money, with our work that they already explored. And still, like, and even like the, the guy that from Apple, they were, were saying that when you buy the parts, when you are authorized service, they all have a tracking. They all they have GPS. So you cannot take these parts and, and put on and repair somewhere else. So if you register that here's the service, if you go outside of this, they, they kind of like, they track and they will like delete, they will not be able to serve anymore. So really like they, they see the radius of the delivery of the part. It's like really control crazy. Like, and but I think again, maybe, uh, I think, uh, governments as well and laws and regulations that we need to fight for, but we need more, uh, power, but to, to kind of just have the small wins that right the same way too. We have holidays, we have paid holidays and stuff like that. I definitely agree with you, but it, it's funny, you know, we fight to fix our own things, but we give our own data freely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And for me, the, in the AI part, what bothers me the most is like, all the companies are training their models in an unethical way, mm -hmm. but the companies with the money can pay people for not be bothered about them and the open source community cannot. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. Yeah. So there's yeah, a lot that, of undertrained that, models available. That, that's and I, I think that that's not the, uh, they are also taking advantage of the, there is no clarity, legal clarity. For yeah. example, there was also this news that they use YouTube transcripts to train their videos, YouTube, Matt, and we all know that, right? They're not just the transcript, also the videos itself. And we all know that. Uh, like where they took all this training, all this it was not from stock uh, video or something like that. And probably there, of course, they will have a lot of money for the legal team. They would say, well, but the data is public. The data is there. There is no clarity. Like we just, as a user, can go there and take the transcript. That's what we did. We have here 10,000 people that were like taking the script, whatever. Right. And they, they will use this, this legal and clarity to defend against the, the obvious we know that kind of which which reminds me on the lobbies for tobacco companies you know and uh, oil companies we we knew we knew that it's bad yeah. it's bad for our lungs it's bad for nature but uh, we just paid a lot of money to you know keep doing wrong things and is it is it getting better what well, with really? tobacco yes but we have weed now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. It's, it's yeah, it was crazy. Like in the 60s, doctors. Yeah, you can smoke inside the airplane. Doctors were How cool just receiving. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's crazy. 
yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, but yeah, weed, weed will be the 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 next uh, battle. But uh, there there is some evolution. You also see on the humor and like if you see some if you see some humor show for twenty years ago, so like, this will never be on air today. Like the kind of jokes the guy is doing, and yeah, there is this kind of change. <laughs> Yeah, man, so we are getting to the end of our super nice conversation, getting to our last questions. I'd like to ask you, what are your, your main tips for people who want to start working with ConfUI and learning more about it and learn more about and get involved in the open source community and like be to the team idealists and good people? <laughs> uh, yeah, first of all, we have to be curious. If you're not curious, if if you you if uh, you don't want to learn that this this it just isn't your thing, open source and comfy white, you better stick with Midjourney and with uh, um, commercial tools. But if you are, if you are, if you want to learn, if you if you are curious, then start experimenting start playing and if you need some help go to discord go to uh, servers like banodoko and uh, there is a great community over there with the best people in ai i mean the, the most talented the, the the greatest people you meet there and just just ask them just ask them they will help you I mean, it's so incredible. You have, for example, I had an issue with IP adapters and uh, I clicked Matteo and he replied in minutes and he helped me. And uh, Chris Vespanciani, I needed some, some uh, guidance. He gave it like this or the guy that uh, made um, the, the, um, the, the change background workflow. Um, what's, what's his name? Andrea. I mean, he, he replied instantly. So don't be afraid. Just, just go there, start asking, start searching for info. Civit AI is your friend. Uh, go experiment, uh, just drag and drop the workflows, uh, uh, toy with them. Just dial in stuff, connect stuff to different stuff, you know. Press that button to that generate button and just, you know, go wild and you will learn a lot, a lot. Maybe not at the beginning, but just keep going, keep going because it's beautiful on the other side. Trust me. <laughs> Maybe you can create this chart, right? There's a chart of ConfUI. It's very hard, very hard in the beginning, but once you get this sweet spot, you know, the basics, you know, the way around, then it gets really like. Right, creative yeah. and free and flexible. I'm still on the hard go up because like, I don't have much time, but <laughs> I'm, one day I will be there on this on this on this place yeah, where I mean, I quit my job to study it. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't do it if I would have job. <laughs> luckily, yeah, it's really time consuming. Definitely. Exactly. Luckily, I had some savings, and I but I knew that this would come out. Uh, uh, this would it, it would um, it would well, what's the word? Um, it would be good for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you felt it, that it was the right, right path, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's yeah, that's very nice. Uh, thanks for for sharing these these tips, and uh, yeah, Mauricio is also preparing one advanced course of uh, also ConfUI that we want to make it in, in Portuguese first. Uh, so I'm also looking. For, maybe I will do the course from Mauricio. We we'll have time. And uh, so yeah, that's our, our last question. So thank thank you very much for coming first to finding some time. We know everyone's busy uh, with AI. For me as well, I have full time uh, job, and uh, I do this on my my free time. Also my AI films. But yeah, the the, the mic is is yours. So feel free to share anything, your links or any projects, uh, whatever whatever you want. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you guys for inviting me to the show. Uh, I had a wonderful time. This conversation was really wonderful. And I'm really, really enjoying talking to people that uh, are in the same uh, are in the same um, 
level of knowledge or in the same uh, AI uh, world, you know. Um, so yeah, what else? Um, my Instagram is barely living, so I won't uh, promote my Instagram. <laughs> no, you can send everything. We will share on the on the link on oh, the description. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I will definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys uh, for invitation. Uh, I had a blast. All right. That's uh, great. Yeah, Maurice, you can go for the yeah last words. Yeah, it was it was an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, being also a, a Banodoko community member and being diving into Confuai and all the kind of things is always a pleasure to talk with with like minded people. And yeah, man, let's let's keep in touch and keep bringing all this this knowledge you have on on your linkedin i think it helps lots of people and it's always interesting it's, it's a way for even me like to be always up to the news because it's so much happening so thanks a lot for that and yeah we always like to finish the podcast with a quote uh creative quote so let people thinking and this week i've done something different so instead of getting some famous quote from some famous person i kind of ask ChatGPT to summarize the quotes and it speaks of a specific artist, in this case, Da Vinci, and create a quote for us. So it's uh, never been heard before quote <laughs> inspired by Da Vinci. Yeah, it, it's hybrid human and, and machine. Uh, and it says, as we teach machines to think, let us not forget that our true genius lies in our ability to imagine the impossible. That's, That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you like this content or this kind of topic, please follow us or share to support our project. Give us a like or a rating. I really appreciate. And thank you, Luca. Thank you, Mauricio. And see you next time. <laughs>